Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am going to discuss on bipolar junction transistor. In our day to day life, we use so many electronic gadgets, equipments where transistor is one of the basic but very important component. Actually, there are an endless number of applications of transistor in the world of electronics starting from various household applications to various industrial applications. And there are various kinds of transistors for different applications which can be fabricated in very smaller size by using modern technologies. In this video, we are going to discuss on a very basic types of transistor that is known as bipolar junction transistor. So let's start. Bipolar junction transistor or BZT is a three terminal semiconductor device used to amplify signals and to switch electronic circuits. As the current is conducted by both free electrons and holes, they are known as bipolar devices. In a BZT, current between two terminals is controlled by current through a third terminal. Therefore, they are known as current control devices. There are two types of bipolar junction transistors. They are NPN and PNP. Before the discussion on the structure on bipolar junction transistors, let us very briefly review the structure of P-type and N-type semiconductors. N-type semiconductors are formed by adding pentavalent impurities to silicon. There are immobile ions, free electrons, which are the majority carriers, and thermally generated free holes, which are the minority carriers, whereas P-type semiconductors are formed by adding trivalent impurities to silicon. There are negative ions, free holes, which are the majority carriers, and thermally generated free electrons, which are the minority carriers. It may be mentioned here that ions do not take part in conduction of current. Therefore, let us consider the free electrons and holes here only. The structure of a bipolar junction transistor is as shown here. It is constructed with three doped semiconductor layers separated by two PN junctions. The three layers are named as collector, emitter, and base. The collector layer is large in size and moderately doped. The base layer is very thin and lightly doped. The emitter layer is moderate in size and heavily doped. So this is the structure of NPN transistor and this is the structure of PNP bipolar junction transistor and this is the symbol for NPN transistor and this is the symbol for PNP transistor. The position of the arrow mark will distinguish between NPN and PNP. The basic operation of a BJT can be compared with the operation of a flow control valve as shown here. Here the flow of liquid from source to the sink can be controlled by the position of this valve. Similarly, in BZT, the current from the collector to the emitter can be controlled by the current through the base. Hence, the collector current may be represented as a function of the base current. For proper operation of the transistor, the two PN junctions must be biased properly with external voltages. Here, the base emitter junction is forward biased. As you can see, the P layer is connected to positive terminal and N layer is connected to the negative terminal. Whereas, the base collector junction is reverse bias. It must be mentioned that the collector potential is more positive than the base potential. So the base collector junction is reverse bias. As the B junction is forward bias, the free electrons in the emitter layer diffuses to the base layer. This contributes to the emitter current. Few of the electrons combines with the holes in the base layer. Few electrons flow out of the base lead which contributes small base current. Most of the electrons are pulled up through the collector layer by the positive supply voltage which contributes the collector current as shown here. Here the emitter current will be equal to the sum of the base current and the collector current. Since BJT has three terminals, one terminal must be common to both input and output circuits. If the base is common to both input and output circuit, it is known as common base configuration. And if the emitter is common to both input and output circuit, it is known as common emitter configurations. Similarly, if the collector is common to both input and output circuit, it is known as common collector configurations. In the common base configuration, the input current is emitter current and the output is collector current. Therefore, the current gain can be represented as the ratio of the output current to the input current. Here, the alpha denotes the current gain in CV configuration. Similarly, the beta represents the current gain in common emitter configuration. 
and gamma ray presence the current gain in common collector configurations a relation between the current gain parameters alpha beta and gamma can be derived as shown here so here you can see alpha can be represented as beta by 1 plus beta and gamma can be represented as 1 plus beta when we use any one of the cb cc or ce configuration it is very important to connect the terminals with external voltage with proper polarity but how to determine this let us follow these steps we'll follow the direction of this arrow will mark the direction of the current going like this as emitter current. Next, we will apply KCL to determine the direction of collector current and base current. As we know that the emitter current is equal to the sum of the collector current and base current. Now we can connect an external voltage in a base emitter circuit in such a way that IB flows in this direction. So here you can see IB will flow like this when this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative. Similarly, we can connect an external voltage at the collector emitter circuit in such a way that IC flows like this. So this is possible only when this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative. So this is how we can determine the polarity of the external voltages. So that's all for now. In my next video on BZT, we'll discuss on the characteristics of the device. Thank you very much for watching.